Hey friend, I am doing a fun project with cupcake liners. I had somebody comment and ask me if I could do a tutorial for them on how I've done this. And so that is exactly what we're going to do. So as I put a pin in my mouth, I'm going to give you the view there. Oops, sorry. And we'll stick me up over here in the corner. Okay, so what I have is a bunch of cupcake liners. These could be a little trickier because they're heavier. They actually have a foil liner with them. So we'll see how this works. Then I've got a um, just a round foam wreath. Uh, this one's small because I'm going to use this as a candle ring holder. I don't need to get that off. I don't know why I'm messing with it. And then I have um, I have straight pins, just small straight pins. So first thing you have to do is you have to cover the wreath and just sticking the pins in is all you got to do. Okay, then I'm going to get another one and stretch it out, overlap just a little bit, and pull it around and stick it in. All right, and we're going to keep going around like this, overlapping and, and sticking the pin in. And I know this is a little laborious, so let's chat. If you're on, say hello. Just made some really cute gnomes over on the business page. And I wanted to do this because I've been requested to do a tutorial on it. So it's really easy and fun, and you could do this with any number of designs. I have actually some buffalo plaid ones for Christmas, but I wanted to save it for a little closer to Christmas. All right, I am making a candle wreath. Um, you know, a whole, I'm gonna put a big candle in it. We're using cupcake liners. So I'll show you the back side here in just a minute. These magnetic pins are kind of a bit of a pain. Okay, last one there. And just sticking those pins in. Okay, so now we've got that on the back side. Isn't that nice right there? Now we're going to cover up this side so you kind of adjust where that goes. Um, and so, it's, so where these two kind of come down, that's where the biggest part is going to go. But think of the possibilities. I made one of these at 4th of July time. And now making some for Halloween. This would be cute with a... A fall cupcake, like if you could find some cupcake liners that were had a pretty uh, fall coloring on them. That would be gorgeous. <clears throat> I'm always on the lookout for cupcakes, liners, and napkins. All right. Seems easier if I have some of these 
pins out on the table. Just close to being there. And if you need more than one pin, if an area is sticking out like over here, I'm not going to worry about that yet though because it might not be necessary to cover that. We'll wait and see once I get the top part done. Uh, two more. <laughs> yep. I got you, Bobby. I got you. Hello. Oh gosh, I could say that for so many things. Right? Every kind of craft there is. All right. So now we've got both sides covered. And you can kind of crunch them in as needed. And occasionally, because it's just being held in with a little pin, you might need to go back if it pops off. Now, I tried using my staple gun, and I didn't like... It was harder, actually. You'd think that'd be real easy, just to boop, 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 staples. But what I'm looking for here now is this side looks a little better for the um, part that's not going to be covered up, if that makes sense. So I'm going to put that on the bottom because now on the top, so this one looks nicest. So now on the top, we're taking them and we're opening them up. And like I said, these are unusual because they have the foil color in them. But you're basically making like a little flower. Like if you can even pinch the center out and then make it a cone and then hold there and open it back up. That's what you're trying to do. Let's make a little little flower and then you're going to take a pin and you're going to pin it in and it's as easy as that i have another one here that these are definitely harder to work with because they have this foil lining they're a lot stiffer than the ones that are just paper And, you know, you could get real particular about it, right? You could um, get really fussy about making sure they look all perfectly matched. And they don't need to be. So just start scrunching and sticking in. Now, if you've got a ton of wrappers you could do it on the outside as well I'm not going to have enough for that so I'm just going around the top and but you could have some coming I, I did a really big one at 4th of July time and I remember that I did kind of on the insides and the outside and the top this we're just doing around the top. But it really looks pretty stunning. You'd never guess. It's paper, uh, cupcake liners. And so my thought is I'll put a big pillar candle in here. And this will be pretty stinking beautiful and cute. Now, right here, I've got a little 
piece is wanting to stick out. So as you, as you go, you might need to push some stuff down a little bit better. And of course, when you're completely done, you can go back and fluff. I have even, on the last one I did, I sprayed it with water, a light mist of water to then kind of scrunch. This really holds its shape because of this foil. So I don't think I'll need to do that. But what, a, and, and you can buy these um, little foam wreaths in this size and bigger at the dollar store. So dependent on how much your cupcake liners are this is a very inexpensive craft project and it really doesn't take too long once you kind of get in the groove of going so just scrunch it and this is really actually very pretty because you can see the um silver. So yeah, there you go. There is, and I have three cupcake liners left. There is the candle ring cupcake holder. Cupcake holder, candle ring, which way would you say it? Okay, this is where I get obsessive and I just keep playing. But there you go. Isn't that pretty? I I like it a lot. Um, I wish I had a big fat candle down here. I don't. But I'll take pictures. Okay? So thanks for watching, guys.